Hello, my name is Wyatt, I am a bartender, and I want to make you guys martinis for the first episode, true official episode of the control bar. I'm going to teach you different ways to make martinis, I'm going to tell it also, and afterwards, we will sit back with the drink that we made together, assuming you have all the ingredients, but if you don't, pause, and head out to get to the store to get everything you need. So. Martini. What exactly is in a martini? Well, the traditional way gin and dry remove of some kind of form. But there's different variants. There's some like the perfect martini that you need a sweet remove. There's some that has special records like elm flour and stuff like that add to it. But we're gonna stick to this and one recipe for the sweet remove. Basically for almost every martini besides like a handful is two ounces of gin. And depending on if you want to do the traditional way like our ancestors did it or if you want to do it the modern way, this is the biggest available. Legitimately, our ancestors could not handle this stuff back in the day. Cause dry remove is white wine. In the most basic layman terms. It's a white wine fortified. This stuff is aromatic. It has also a tough taste if you're not ready for it. So as I go through the stages of the martini from desert dry to the, the default version, I will show you how many drops are in it because I'm going to make it the traditional way because I'm not a big fan of martinis, but I wanted to make it traditionally proper for you. I will also convert it to the modern ratios so that you can keep up with the modern times with a martini. And yes, the customer may be picky and want it traditionally done, so you have to know your person. Typically, the older they are, the more they want it the old school way, versus someone who's younger who may have just watched James Bond and be like, Yo, give me a martini, shaking that stud. No shaking gin, never. If they say shaking that stud, they fought the fucker. You can shake this shit. Gin can bruise and bruise pretty much all of its flavor and make it really difficult to taste anything from it if you shake it. The only time you should is when you mix it with other alcohol like in a long iron. And bear with me. This is going to literally make you go, what? Also, you would garnish with olives. I don't like olives, so I'm going to skip that. And I don't have any lemons to do a lemon twist. All of our food kind of just went bad on us overnight. And yeah, I'm not trying to give myself some major poisoning while I'm adding poison to my diet. So, I know I'm not doing it right. But come on. This at home. I'm looking for what I have. Alright, after getting everything prepped, you need a spoon, a strainer, some type of missing tin. I'm using this. The ice oh, freeze way too much so it didn't break like I wanted to. So, get some frustration out with it. And now, with the glass, I chilled it in the freezer so I don't have to put ice in it with water. If you do, and I do mean if you have, no way to freeze your glasses or it's not actual glass, it's plastic. I recommend just putting like a couple ice cubes, like literally to about here, if it's a plastic martini or three to five ice cubes and splash of water, give it a swirl and put it to the side. So, two ounces of gin. And for dead or dry, you need to do nothing else. That's what we have dead or dry. It's just two ounces of gin, be boop with a donage. Now let's go to extra dry. And again, I'm doing it traditionally. It'd be one eighth ounce modern days, but it's with three. Come on, it's bound. I did three drops instead of two. I fucked up the recipe. My ancestors would have been bitching and complaining for hours on end, 
but it's literally one to two drops for extra dry. For a normal dry, it's three to four, so I just need one more ounce, technically speaking. Got it. Which would be a quarter ounce. And then lastly, a classic martini. Two more drops. And that's just four of martinis I just made for you. And then for the case of a perfect martini, I won't demonstrate that for you. But you do six to eight drops of sweet remove on top of it. Just like that. You just want five different martinis. And then you stir until the outside of the glass is ice cold or about 10 seconds, depending on the pin. The ice cubes are fine with me today. And now if you do this correctly, the glass liquid should be here. It should never be full. You gotta remember, these are drunk people. And they're gonna be doing all this while walking. You want to have a wheel room in case they get drunk and want to try to stir it in quick. Perfect. And that is a martini. Minus the garnishes, as I mentioned. One off, they pay extra for three. Or lemon twist that you put around the outside, squeeze the oils in, and you drop it. Or if they want it on the edge, you can twist it or pull it. That's when you can talk to the customer and see how much they want their lemon. Because people with lemons want to be Pacific. <sighs> so, that is five ways to make a martini. Now, the vodka is basically the same thing, but you shake it. So, if you want to do a modern day martini, you do for extra dry, it will be an eighth of an ounce. Dry is a quarter ounce and then half ounce for a normal martini. That's a dry is always that's a dry, no remove. And then same thing with perfect martinis. And honestly I haven't seen people order this at a bar. At least the bars I go to. So I would say for a safe bet they probably make it like this or tell you to fuck off. So now let's give it a taste. Majority gin. You do get the subtleties of the dry remove, but personally, if I'm gonna drink something with dry remove, I would do the modern day version. It is the superior way. But that's the traditional way. I want to demonstrate that to you. Drink this with modern day recipes and ingredients. This is just a two ounces of gin and just a couple of drops. Like, come on, bro. Anyways, let's learn about the true history of a martini outside of James Bond. I probably, sh I probably should, before everyone in the comments get ahead of me, a dirty martini is a quarter ounce of olive juice or about three to four drops of olive juice depending on if you want the traditional or the modern day version. So, I taught you just sits just now. Technically, 11 if you consider all the vodka considerations. Anyways, <laughs> how this whole section works is that once I finish this, the history lesson is over. So, who invented this drink? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. No one knows. It seems like it is an interpretation of another popular drink called the Mad Madres from the 1860s. So, after looking at how they make a Madres, I am interested. So, I'm gonna quickly talk about the Madres, since that seems like the common point for the originator. Um, and yes, for the record, American drink. Ooh -ah. 
what is in a madras if you look at it from the 1800s it is one dash of bitters two dashes of medicino not cherry just medicino one pony which is one ounce a old tom gin two ounces a sweet Italian remove and an ice chicken uh, which again probably should specify the generic Jake shake gin <sighs> but hey it's our ancestors they don't know what they were doing half the time and for the record it was made in a hotel the uh shaisa old chin aunt Nicole I'm gonna assume I'm gonna put cereal with my voice to make it sound proper. <laughs> my accent cannot do two C's in a row. So it was in California, San Francisco, my Taz area. So the original was a picky drink from a town and they named it after a town drink, which, you know what? Fair enough. Okay, the reason why the traditional martini is only a couple drops versus the half ounce the shot glasses this is something I was not told about so I'm gonna recorrect what I said it was due to the Great Depression remove was hard to import and was hard to get a hold of plus on top of gin but gin had a lot more of a steady supply so it was dropped to only a couple drops to save on supply so this drink that I just made for myself was, do, was basically what the Great Depression folks had who had the money to buy alcohol at a bar and wanted to feel good for themselves. Fair enough. Okay, I stand corrected, ancestors. You're going for a tough time and we picked this time period to make it traditional. The more you know. And this is why I want to teach the history of it. So that I can learn. So I don't make silly mistakes like I just did. Other popular variations of this. Okay. It's the espresso martini. Which is honestly my favorite. Vodka based cocktail. It honestly is. I'm a big coffee person. I bought me a cheap espresso machine. Because <laughs> I love coffee that much. So. Alright. Finish my drink. Hopefully you did as well. I know this is when we cut it, so it's a different time period than me. I want to say, what do you think? I want feedback on how I can make these videos better. I want it to be casual. I don't want it to be overly harsh. I want you to see most of my mistakes. Because I don't want you to see me as a perfect bartender. I'm just having fun. I want to learn. And to me, this is a great starting point. And I wanted to hear what drinks you are interested in me making down the road. I already have September and October figured out, but afterwards, I'm kind of up in the air. I'm not 100% sure what I should focus on. And I want to hop between different spirits, so I'm not just doing one spirit. So today we did gin. Next week we're going to do a bourbon. That's one we're going to do a vodka. Then maybe a tequila. Then a one and then just do a cycle like that because I want to explore I want to learn I want to express my hobbies and also learn the history side of it I am in the process of just learning I'm not a expert on mythology I'm just someone who has won a bunch of recipes and I want to learn the history of why did someone do a couple of drops Versus like quarter ounces like we do now. Now I know. Now I understand. Granted, it's a sad thing of history, but then again, history is always sad. With that being said, I don't know how I'm going to end this video. I don't know how much it's going to be shown, shown or how long it's going to be. I see 12 minutes right now on the timer, and I know the recipe and just talking bits took 10 minutes so I'm thinking this is going to be a 15 minute but just let me know what you think and let's make a couple drinks together
next week will be my favorite drink. The old-fashioned. Peace.